Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, I'll be reviewing the GTX 1060 3GB with 15 games now in 2021. Is 3GB of VRAM still enough? Let's find out together. Let's first talk about the history of this graphics card. This specific model of the GTX 1060 3GB I will be reviewing is the ASUS Dual GTX 1060 3GB OC. The GTX 1060 3GB was released back on August 18, 2016. So, this card is 5 years old now. This was a controversial card when it was released because of its name, GTX 1060. It has the same name as its bigger brother, the GTX 1060 6GB even though it doesn't actually have the same CUDA core count. From 1280 to 1152 CUDA cores, that's a 10% reduction, and the memory size is reduced from 6 to 3GB with a 192-bit bus, though the speed is the same at 8GB per second that equates to 192MB a second of memory bandwidth. Pascal architecture was revolutionary, the performance per watt of this generation was incredible jump compared to the previous one. This GPU consumes only 120 watts of power. According to the Steam survey, the GTX 1060 is still the most popular graphics cards to this day, in 2021. The ASUS Dual GTX 1060 3GB OC, compared to the reference 1060 3GB, has a higher boost clock from 1708 to 1809 MHz, a 6% increase. But during gaming, the clock speed is actually higher, around 1860 to 1890 MHz. The memory speed remains unchanged at 8 gigabits per second. Let's take a look at this graphics card. This is a great looking graphics card. I like the white color theme on it. It's perfect for white PC builds. Unfortunately though, it doesn't have a backplate, but ASUS has painted the back of the PCB black, so it's alright. This model has a dual fan design, an improvement compared to the blower card of the Founders Edition. It keeps the temperature checked and the fans are not that loud. You can just hear them during intense GP load, but it's not that annoying, very tolerable. Unfortunately, for the RGB lighting lovers, it doesn't have any RGB lighting, so that's a minus 10% to the performance of the graphics card. Jokes aside, this is a good looking graphics card, and it only requires 6 pin to power it up. Here is the complete specification of this graphics card, and the driver version in which the game is tested. And here is the test system we'll be running it on. Before I show the benchmark results, I want to say that the background gameplay is not the benchmark run. It's a completely separate gameplay. The FPS could be lower because it's being recorded via OBS, so it might take a hit on performance. The background gameplay is still being run on the same settings and the system specs including the GPU. I benchmark a specific area that is replicable 3 times so I can get a reliable result. All that out of the way, let's see the results of 15 games I benchmarked. Let's first take a look at Valorant. This game runs pretty well on the GTX 1060 3GB even at the highest settings. Comfortably maintaining above 144 FPS, perfect for esports gamers. This game is better to run at the lowest settings to get the highest possible FPS if you're a competitive gamer. This is the type of game that will benefit on a CPU upgrade rather than the GPU if you have the GTX 1060 3GB. Fortnite runs ok with this graphics card at high settings. It can run the game around 78 FPS but dips below 60s during intense gunfights. Lowering the graphics to competitive settings yields better performance at the cost of the graphics quality. So, if you're a competitive Fortnite player, this GPU is capable even now in 2021. If 
you're a casual and looking for around 60 fps at high settings, the GTX 1060 3GB will give you that performance. GTA 5 was released on PC back in 2015. It makes this game 6 years old now, just 1 year older than the GTX 1060 2GB. The performance reflects on that. Even at the high settings at 1080p, the game runs great, averaging 100fps. So if you love playing GTA 5, this GPU is still pretty much capable of running it now in 2021. Call of Duty Warzone experience is playable at medium low settings. It's uh, able to maintain around 67 FPS and 1% uh, loss of 54. Lowering the graphics doesn't yield much more performance. So if you're a competitive Call of Duty Warzone player and uh, you have a GTX 1062GB, a GPU upgrade will be very handy. You can play this game, but just don't expect competitive FPS performance. Battlefield 5 gaming experience is a little bit better compared to Warzone. Maintaining around 79 FPS average and 1% loss of 57 at medium settings. Lowering the graphics will boost the FPS quite a bit. It will give you a more fluid experience, better for competitive gamers. For casual, medium settings gives a decently playable performance with a bit of graphics quality. Apex Legends gameplay experience was good, around 94 FPS average and 72 1% loss. I consider 90 FPS to be minimum FPS to be competitive in a game. The GTX 1062GB at medium settings give exactly that, so I'm pleased with this performance. Lowering the graphics would give a bit more performance, so if you're a competitive gamer, this GPU is still capable. Forza Horizon 4 at high settings gives a pleasurable experience with great graphics. I'm very pleased with the performance of this GPU. Averaging 96 FPS and 75 1% lows, this game is perfectly playable with the GTX 1060 3GB, though putting higher graphics, for example at Ultra, taxes the GPU quite a lot because of the VRAM capacity, so I wouldn't really recommend it. This is the first game that gave the GTX 1060 2GB a kick in the butt. The 2GB frame buffer only allowed for low settings, any higher and we would exceed it. It averages around 71fps with 1% loss of 49fps. It's playable but I would have preferred at least 90fps average in this fast paced first person shooter game. The gameplay experience with Cyberpunk is terrible. Averaging around 40 FPS, it was hard to play and drive. This game really shows the age of the GTX 1060 3GB. You would benefit on a GPU upgrade if you really want to play this game. You can still play this game if you're okay with playing it at around 30 FPS. After that terrible experience, the GTX 1060 3GB redeemed itself with Splitgate, averaging around 204 FPS with 1% loss of 135. This was a very good experience, and I was able to play without worrying about performance even at high settings. So if I miss my shots, I cannot blame the graphics card anymore. This GPU is capable of giving competitive performance even at high settings. So, if you're a speedgate player, this GPU is definitely still good enough. Rocket League, just like speedgate, was an amazing experience. Even at high settings, it was capable of giving high frame rates. 286 FPS average and 183 FPS 1% loss. Even with my terrible gameplay, the GPU performance makes up for it. The GTX 1063GB can play Rocket League and look cool while doing so.
any War Thunder players out there? Anyways, this GPU was able to give 160 FPS average and 101 1% lows at high settings. Not as high as Rocket League, but very playable even for competitive War Thunder players. But let's be honest, they play at ultra low quality anyways. And uh, we just love playing this game and losing every silver alliance while doing so. <laughs> Jokes aside, this GPU gives a pleasurable performance and graphics at this game. Overwatch experience was great. An average of 124 FPS with 1% loss of 75 gives you a fairly competitive performance with decently looking graphics. Any Overwatch players would be pleased with this kind of performance, but if you really want more FPS, just turn the graphics lower to achieve it. This GPU is still very suitable for this game. Red Dead Redemption 2 experience was similar to Cyberpunk, so it's terrible. An average below 60 FPS is not playable in my opinion for today's standards, but if you're okay with 30 FPS, this GPU can deliver it at low to medium settings. This game, just like Doom, shows the GTX 1060 3GB that it's pretty old. The experience is almost playable. A little bit better compared to Red Dead Redemption 2, but still under 60 FPS. The newly released AAA titles really, really give this GPU a headache, and even you, the gamer. So, if you're planning to play these types of games, you really need to upgrade your graphics card. If only the GPU market now is actually okay, but it's not so. Just hope our old GPU still holds on with us. And that's it! Those are the 15 games I have benchmarked. So what did we learn? Is the GTX 1060-3GB still capable card now in 2021? The answer is yes and no. It depends on the game. For esports game, the GTX 1060-3GB is definitely still capable, sacrificing the graphics per performance, or maybe a little bit of graphics with decent performance. But for recently released AAA titles, uh, it really struggles a lot even at low to medium settings at 1080p and 2GB of VRAM is just not enough now in 2021. So if you're rocking this GPU, take a look at the games you play. If you're an esports game player, it's still capable. If you're a AAA games player or likes good graphics, a GPU upgrade is necessary for you. Hopefully the GPU pricing gets better soon. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. This video took me a week to make and I would appreciate your support so if you enjoyed the video, Feel free to leave a like, subscribe to not miss upcoming videos, try to post one video a week uh, during Mondays, leave a comment because it helps the algorithm, uh, just if you want to. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, type it in the comments and I will be replying when possible. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel, take care and see you next time. Bye!